Well, good evening, and thank you for joining us here at the Friendship Baptist Church of Delaware. And thank you for joining us for another Wednesday night Bible class. We hope and pray that your day has been great and your week has been wonderful. Let us pray. Father, we thank you. Father, you said in your word and everything to give thanks for this is the will of God. Father, we thank you for this day. We thank you for all that you have done. Thank you for how you have brought us up into this present moment. Now, Father, I pray for my brother. I pray for my sister. I pray now for those that are viewing us that, Father, whatever they stand in need of today, that our lives will never be the same. And, Father, we give your name praise. We give your name glory. We thank you, Father, for all that you are and have been to us and that you shall continue to take us through this week, take us through this year, that as only you can do. And, Father, we love you. And we give your name praise. It's in Jesus' name we say amen. Listen, thank you for joining us here at the Friendship Baptist Church. We thank you for another time that we've allowed us to, God has allowed us to come into your homes, wherever you may be viewing us from, for our Wednesday night Bible class. Grab your Bibles and let's go right to the word of the Lord. We want to honor, amen, our deacon board. I want to honor our mothers. We want to honor every person. Um, that is a part of friendship. Uh, Romans chapter 15. Romans chapter 15, verses 5 through 6. Reading out of the New Revised Standard Version of the Bible, it says, May the God of steadfastness and encouragement grant you to live in harmony with one another in accordance with Christ Jesus so that together you may be with one voice glorify the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Read it again. May the God of steadfastness and encouragement grant you to live in harmony with one another in accordance with Christ Jesus so that together ye may with one voice glorify the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. I want to title our lesson tonight, The Power of Unity. The Power of Unity. Uh, there is a quote that has been quoted uh, we are only as strong as we are united and as weak as we are divided. There's another quote that says, and all the books you've read have been read by other people. There's another one that I want to give you tonight that says, we are each other's harvest. We are each other's business. We are each other's bond. A history and background of our lesson tonight, Paul is writing to the church of Rome to introduce himself, to share his understanding of following Jesus and to encourage the church in the mission they shared. As he moves towards the conclusion of the letter, Paul writes about the importance and power of unity in the church. I read it again, and it says, and as he moves towards the conclusion of this letter, Paul writes about the importance of power of unity in the church. This is what he says, that may the God of steadfastness and encouragement grant you to live in harmony with one another in accordance with Christ Jesus, so that together ye may with one voice, glorify the God and Father of the Lord Jesus Christ. In these two verses, Paul tells us something significant about God and unity. God and unity. The first part of the verse five, the first part of verse five is actually a prayer uh, for the church in which Paul names two aspects of God's character steadfastness and encouragement. The God we worship is steadfast. The God we 
worship is steadfast. Uh, what does it mean to be steadfast? To, to be steadfast is to be reliable, dependable, consistent, and trustworthy. To be steadfast is to be reliable, dependable, consistent, and trustworthy. When someone is steadfast, we learn that we can rely on him or her. When something is steadfast, we can count on it. Let's take my answer. Uh, uh, let's take it into uh, uh, consideration tonight that uh, the chair that you step that you sit in are steadfast. We know that this to be true from years of experience because we know that the chairs are steadfast. We trust them without hesitation. But I want to tell you something tonight. God is also steadfast. God's character is reliable, dependable, consistent, and he's trustworthy. We can rely on the Lord to be loving, gracious, merciful, and just. Believe it or not, brothers and sisters, we have some people in our lives that we consider them to be reliable. We we consider them to be dependable. We, we can consider them to be consistent and trustworthy, but realizing that there comes a time in life where they will not be reliable, dependable, consistent, and trustworthy. But, but, but we must believe that believing in a God who is steadfast, these things take a lot of worry and anxiety out of life. Whatever the amount of worry and anxiety that we have today, we have a lot more if a steadfast God was not part of our lives. Yes. For, for many people from whom the day seem unwearily tough, confusing, hard, one of the things we need is someone steadfast and reliable like God in our lives, literally to steady us as many other things are shifting and changing. That we must understand, brothers and sisters, that we're, we're living in a day and time where, 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 where people uh, are not what they say that they are. They only unify because it benefits them. I'm only here to get the crumb. I'm only here to get what I can get out of it. And once I get what I get out of it, I'm no longer uh, uh, satisfied. I'm no longer interested in this. I'm no, no longer dependable because I got what I wanted. I know God is not the right word, but I, I, I had have what I want. But here now, according to Paul, God proves uh, to the most uh, proves two of the most basic things we will all need in life. Steadfastness and encouragement. A, un, uh, a unified and harmonious church presents a powerful witness to the world. A church filled with individuals seeking their own agendas, want, needs, leads to conflict, disunity, a lack of togetherness, and a lot of voices instead of the voice glorifying the God of our Lord Jesus Christ. That we must understand here that, that if we're ever going to be the church, if we're ever going to represent Christ in the way that he wants us to represent him, uh, everyone has to say the same thing. That we have to be unified. That you can tell a cop because they have their uniform on. You can tell a doctor between a doctor and a nurse because they have a distinct uniform. But we must, bro, brothers and sisters, that we must understand that there's a unified, uh, 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 that we must be unified in the body of Christ. I'm not talking about what you wear. But it's be who, but, but, but rather it is who you are and what you belong to. 
that brothers and sisters, we must understand that unity is a powerful, is powerful everywhere it is found. Not just when it's found in a church. A lack of unity is a highly destructive wherever it is found. Not just in a church. But here Paul says in Romans, we exist as a church. So, to, so that together we may be one voice glorifying the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. That if we're going to be successful doing that, it's going to take everyone making that our goal. That winning, that what winning looks like, or rather, that's what winning looks like for us as the church. It's easy to tell who wins the ball games. Because there's a scoreboard and there's a clock. And when the time is up, whoever has the most points wins the game. As a church winning is each, as a church winning is each of us making every effort to live in harmony as Jesus taught us to live. Working in unity in church, in our families, as citizens, even where we work. Let me say that again. As a church winning is each of us making every effort to live in a harmony as Jesus taught us to live, working for unity in the church. In our families, as a citizen, even where we work. That we must understand something, brothers and sisters, church, family, citizen, and where we were. There's somebody always in the bunch that's going to try you. That's not going to give the 100%. You say, "Go, let's go right. They're going to go left because, as I say all the time, they just don't want to do right. So what do you do when... When, 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 when God is saying to us tonight that we must that we must work and live in harmony. There's nothing more beautiful than harmony. A song, you, you don't know what the song is. But because it's done in harmony, the music and the singers and, and all of that. Put together. That when it comes together. That you can feel. What's being sung. What's being played. What's being spoken. Because everybody is moving in harmony. That we must understand that even, as I said again, that, that, that living in harmony as Jesus taught us to live, working for unity in the church, our families, our citizens, even where we work, that, 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 that we must understand that where we go, wherever we go, family, as a citizen, where we work, our family, there should be something on us that you should be able to gather the people. So no, we're not going to do it like this. Let's do it this way. Let's do it the God way. But here it is. Peter says in, uh, uh, in 1 Peter 3 and 8, it says, Finally, all of you have unity in spirit, sympathy, love for one another, a tender heart, and a humbled mind. Says blessings, finally, all of you having unity of spirit, sympathy, love for one another, a tender heart, and a human mind. Uh, let's, let's look at this tonight and, and, and deal with these. What does it mean 
for you that God is steadfast? What does it mean to you that God is steadfast? What we see tonight in our text and they see in this scripture that God is steadfast because he's reliable, dependable. He's consistent. A man that was no sin took all the sins of the world that you and I might have a right to the tree of life. It means everything. Or it should mean everything to you that God is steadfast. What, number two, point number two, what is it like for when you receive encouragement? What difference does it make? Everybody wants encouragement. Just a little bit of encouragement. That even David said, I had to encourage my own self in the Lord. That he had to encourage himself because uh, when, we, when, you, when you're going about life and you're doing, it's always good to be, hey man, you, hey girl, you're doing a good job. It goes a long way. But here it is. Don't get distracted if they don't encourage you. You got to keep moving. And what difference does it make? It makes a lot of difference. Because you never know what your brother and sister is going through. That that little encouragement can change the whole uh, uh, graph of their day. They could have got bad news on the way to work. They could have got some bad news the night before. But one encouragement can change their day. But well, here it is. How important is it to live in harmony? It's very important. The worst thing that we can ever do is, you can hear, is when things ain't going right. I remember when I was growing up and I was in school and we were, we was in band. I was in band. I was in music. And one note messed up the whole thing. One false move messed up everything. So it's very important that we live in harmony. It's how, how important? It's very important that we live in harmony. Why? Because the moment that we get out and try to do it on our own, that's the moment where things will go wrong. But here it is. How would you describe the power and impact of unity? The power and the impact of unity is so important. Because power, anything without power is powerless. So if unity has no power, if unity has, and if it does not, if it has no impact, you're just walking. You're just on mute. What can you do to become more steadfast, more encouragement, and a force for unity? I want to suggest to you tonight, um, as we bring our lesson to a close tonight. Uh, I want to and tell you this, that I want you to, to become more steadfast. How can I become more steadfast? You got to learn how to be reliable, dependable, consistent. Be be unified. Be 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 what is needed and necessary. And understanding more encouragement, and become a more force for unity, and not against division. The Bible says, "A house divided against itself cannot stand." Brothers and sisters, that it's time now that we bring ourselves together. That as we 
as we come now into what what we call the new norm, that we should now know how to rebuild one another. They had a saying as a child and said, sticks and stones may break, may break my bones, but names are never hurt. That's an absolute lie. You might not can fight, but if you put the words together, boy, you can crush somebody's soul. That we have to learn the unity of it is, is that I'm not coming against what you are, who you are. But I want to stand with you that we can get the kingdom agenda done. Listen, I want to tell you tonight the power of unity. That when we have the power of unity, that even as the Bible says, upon this rock, Peter says, upon this rock, I build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail. He was not talking about brick and mortar. But he was talking about we, us being the church. That we have to understand that we will go through storms in our lives. We'll go through storms and 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 all that we but we must understand something. That whatever we go through in life, have a consistent prayer life. And say, Lord, I I don't know what you're doing in this season. That, Father, that whatever you're doing, I stand and acquiesce to your will. My soul says yes. My will says yes. That I'll be a unified body. That I'll be consistent to you. I'll be reliable to you. There's no nothing more worse than having persons, people, and places and things in your life that you give more to them than they give more to you. Understand who you are in the kingdom. The power of unity. Father, we thank you tonight. We thank you for this time of word. We thank you for this time of impartation. Now, Father, we've done as you told us to do. That I pray, Father, that my brother, my sister has been encouraged. That, the, that you showed us today, Father, the power of unity. Father, we love you today. We give your name praise. Now may the grace of God and the sweet communion of the Holy Spirit rest rule and abide henceforth and forevermore. All of God's people said amen. Listen, we love you. We want to see you back here next Wednesday, 7 o'clock for our Bible study. The Lord is doing something great. Once again, meet us every second and fourth Sunday at the Friendship Baptist Church, 530 East 4th Street, Wilmington, Delaware. Service 10 a.m. Um, we look to see, see, we look to see you, look to hear from you. God bless you. May the Lord be with you. Is our prayer. <laughs>